Just a couple of weeks ago, I brought you guys a fairly interesting news story. The story was that Google was going to be partnering with other OEMs to create something called a Chromebook Plus. Now, the general idea here, as far as I can tell, is to basically further justify the existence of more expensive, premium spec Chromebooks, considering most people feel like Chromebooks are meant to be sort of inexpensive, low-end devices. This initiative is there to sort of break that misconception or maybe change the preconception would be a better way to put it. We're going to be getting Chromebooks with better specs. There's going to be a baseline to be a Chromebook Plus. You're going to have to have at least 8 gigs of RAM. You're going to have to have at least a Core i3 processor, a full HD screen and webcam. And by doing this, Google hopes to entice more people into buying more expensive Chromebooks and to think of these Chromebooks as not just a Chromebook, but indeed as a true replacement or even a competitor for a Windows laptop or for an Apple MacBook type device. And to do this, Google is baking in some exclusive feature for these higher end Chromebooks. We're going to take a look at some of those features later on in this video because today we are actually getting our hands on one of the first official Chromebook Plus devices, the Asus Chromebook Plus CX34. So let's start off with the hardware of this Chromebook and we'll come down here to the right hand side and take a look at the port selection. You do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, and then a power delivery USB-C on that side. Lovely enough, you also have another USB-C for power delivery on the other side. Love seeing that on any device. We also have this pretty large trackpad that I've been really quite happy with. Very, very smooth to the touch. Your hand just kind of glides around on it. I've been really happy with the smoothness of operating it so far. Some kind of lower end Chromebooks seem to be a little jittery with their cursor movement. Not this one at all. As you can see here, the keyboard is decently large, but it is also backlit. Let's kill this light here. And you should be able to see that now. It's a really nice touch and it really gives it just a very like professional overall look. You can get a look here at the level of key travel on this keyboard. Really not too bad. And deck flex is there, but it's really quite minimal. Overall, the hardware does feel pretty solid. Of course, this 14 inch screen also looks pretty good to my eye. You can see there's a light on. There's not a ton of glare. It does kind of have like that, oh, that sort of matte finish to it, not a glossy finish. It is also not a touch screen, which is probably one of my biggest disappointments for any device like this. I am a sucker for a touch screen. I'm constantly sitting here typing away and I want to reach up and use my finger. I'm just so used to that at this point when I don't have it. It does make me feel a little bit uncomfortable. And then also when you're talking about, you know, using certain applications like this thing has, which are often Android applications, you expect to have touch input on the device. So that is a little bit of a problem. One last thing I want to touch on, and I really hope that this is going to come through in the video, is the appearance of the material this thing's made out of. It kind of has this like speckled look to it, and it gives it a very unique appearance. And just in case you're thinking it's like a rougher texture, it's not. It is absolutely as smooth as anything. It feels like porcelain or something like that. Really interesting, but I think it looks very good. Now, the bottom of the device is different, though. This does have a kind of rough texture to it, which is kind of an interesting choice. You can see the grills up here as well. This has a texture to it also. Of course, you're not going to be looking at that a whole lot but that is what the bottom looks like. And unfortunately, we do have downward facing speakers, downward firing speakers on the bottom. Let's do a quick speaker test at maximum volume. I'll say that it's actually a little bit better than I was expecting. When you get to some really high levels, you do start to get a little bit of distortion. I wish there was a bit more bass, but overall, it's better than my other Chromebook. Really not too bad for a bottom firing set of speakers. So what I want to do here quickly is try and demonstrate what the benefit is when you go from a normal Chromebook to a Chromebook Plus. And we're not just speaking about software here. We're talking about the hardware. This Lenovo Chromebook 
is running an N6000 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and it is ever so slightly below the threshold to be a Chromebook Plus. Of course, the Asus book I'm reviewing here does have a Core i3. So that is a Chromebook Plus. This is under the threshold. What do you get by having that slightly faster processor? What we're going to do is we're going to try and launch the same things at the same times and see, again, beyond the additional cool software features, does it actually get you anywhere to have that faster processor? Do web pages load faster? Do apps actually launch faster when making what is not a huge leap from this N6000 to this Core i3? Let's start in the most obvious place, just launching Google Chrome. And of course, going to my home screen, not a big difference there. Let's jump into Twitter, though, and we'll see what kind of differences we have. And as you can see, the Core i3 Chromebook did get me into the Twitter homepage a little bit faster. What about YouTube? Let's do that one next. Are we going to have a similar situation there? Again, the i3 processor was faster. And in fact, let's hit the back button. And again, it's just getting us there a little bit quicker. And it's going to be like that pretty much across the board. Let's do the same thing with some Android apps. This is a weather radar called My Radar. Are we going to get into it more quickly? On the i3, we did. And it's actually by a pretty darn big margin. That thing absolutely destroyed my poor N6000. What about in gaming? Let's go ahead and launch Minecraft. I am going to have to sign in on that one, but I think you'll still be able to get a general idea of what we're looking at here. We are seeing a big improvement in the loading times. Let's actually try creating a new world in Minecraft because, again, this is going to kind of give us a demonstration of that speed. We got a head start over there because we had to tick a box, and yet still it absolutely annihilated my... In 6,000. I mean, there's just no comparison. When you get a faster Chromebook, even though even low-end Chromebooks are going to run well, you're going to be okay. You're going to be happy with it, more than likely. If you do step up and go with the Chromebook Plus, there is a noticeable benefit in we're just talking raw horsepower, getting things done, loading applications, loading Android apps, loading web pages. It is absolutely unequivocally a faster experience. So let's take a second and look at some of the new features that are exclusive to these Chromebook Plus devices. So the first thing we're going to do is let's just open up the camera and what you'll see here is an example of what this webcam actually looks like in action. But you can see perhaps at the bottom right down here, there is this new selection of icons and these are indeed one or a couple of those new exclusive features. So what you can do here is toggle some things off and on. I already had improved lighting on. So this is what it normally would look like. But now we can actually improve the lighting. And that makes a pretty dramatic difference. It literally looks like I've turned on a light on this side of my face. And I have not. That is really, really impressive. We also have the ability to automatically blur the background, light, and full. And then, of course, we also have noise cancellation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to video and we're going to actually film for a second and see what this sounds like. So I've actually turned on an air conditioner in the room so I would imagine that's probably somewhat audible and now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on noise cancellation and hopefully that has done a pretty good job of blocking that out. I guess you can be the judge of that. So another exclusive feature to Chromebook Plus can be found inside Google Photos. If we go to Edit, we can look up here at this Tools icon and go into Magic Eraser. And what this allows you to do, and this is going to be a little bit harder with no touch screen, right? You got to use your trackpad, but you should be able to circle something and it is going to actually erase that from the image automatically for you. If you are using a Pixel phone, or perhaps you have uh, Google Photos on another device and you have a Google One subscription, you may already be used to using Magic Eraser on your photos. Well, now it is actually going to be on your Chromebook if you do indeed have a Chromebook Plus. Another way that Google is trying to kind of bridge that gap between things you can do on a Chromebook and things you can do on other more traditional laptops is using something like LumaFusion, which if you don't know, is a full-fledged video editing software for Android that should, in theory now, run really well 
on one of these Chromebook Plus devices. Here's a video that I shot the other day, and I've loaded it up into this timeline, and as you can see, it is playing absolutely flawlessly. And I can tell you that on other Chromebooks that I have, sort of more lower end ones, this is just not the case. This playback is really sort of jittery. And with this application, guys, you can use your trackpad to really smoothly scroll around. You can cut in places. You can add different effects by double clicking on the image. You even have the ability to use things like keys to like get rid of backgrounds of, of certain colors if you happen to do stuff like that. Like if you're like a proper content creator, you can do all of that stuff right here in LumaFusion and it's running really well. In fact, I'll kind of show you a bit of a workflow here. So let's jump over to CX File Explorer, which is another Android app. I'm going to go across my network and grab a couple of files from my other computer. I think for this, I can probably get by just using this one file. We'll grab that and we'll just put it into my downloads folder. Let's jump back over to LumaFusion. There is that file. Let's go back to the beginning and we're going to drop this thing right on top of the other file. Let's jump into it by double clicking and we're going to get rid of that green screen that was there. And now what we should be getting is my little pop up right down there in the corner. And guys, it's working absolutely perfectly. In a pinch, if I had to film content and then edit it on this Chromebook, I could 100% get that done now. I wanna to quickly touch on a couple more Chromebook Plus features. How about File Sync? You can stay productive even on the go. Your Chromebook Plus keeps your Google Drive files always accessible online or offline, automatically downloading your Drive files taking advantage of that new 120 gigabyte minimum of storage. That's definitely a cool thing. I actually use Google Drive Sync on my Windows computer. So now it's just built in to the Chromebook. Really, really cool. When you buy one of these Chromebooks, they're also giving away three months of Adobe Photoshop on the web and Express for free. If you don't know, there is a Photoshop web version now, which from what I can tell, works pretty much exactly like Photoshop normally works. And of course it has all of their generative AI and things like that. So you've got video editing, you've got proper, like proper, proper photo editing. And of course you could always use any number of Android photo editing apps as well that are gonna do a pretty good job as well. So there's tons of options in terms of photo editing as well. And then there are even more features coming in 2024. Things are going to continue to get more and more interesting for these Chromebook Plus devices. Sometime next year, Google's actually going to be shipping some AI features to help you with writing. So as you can see here with just a right click, you can get help with polishing or adding some wit to your words. You can see down here an example where they've written, I'm still in vacay mode, right clicked it and it's generated this type of post. Now, we've seen this in Gboard on Android, but they're actually going to be embedding this directly into your Chromebook. So perhaps generating posts, you know, tell it what kind of tone, what you're talking about. It's gonna just generate text for you. This could be potentially very useful. They also talk about generating images. How about making your own wallpapers on the fly? Again, we've seen this on some other devices like the Pixel 8. I actually talked about this in a prior video. You can actually get that APK on other devices uh, potentially right now, but that's something that's gonna be built into Chromebooks very soon as well. You can see an example of that here, a soft focus photo of flowers with red hues, I think is what that says. It's kind of hard to read and it's generating that for you to set as a wallpaper. And I hope that they continue adding interesting features like this. I would love nothing more than to see Chromebooks, Chrome OS sort of become like the generative AI operating system. I know that Windows is going in the same direction and it's gonna be really fun to watch these two operating systems both try and get smarter and smarter. Who can do it quicker? Who can do it better? I really just wanna hammer home how like incredibly smooth and responsive this device is. I mean, when you jump into the Play Store, it just fires itself up almost instantaneously. And that has been true of pretty much every application that I've loaded up. I can jump into Discord. Again, it's just boom. It's just right in there so fast. Even multimedia applications like Max, HBO's application. There's a little bit of a weird glitch down there is that video play, but look how fast that just gets right in there and it's just so smooth. You wanna get in some YouTube TV, something like that? Look how quickly you're into YouTube TV and load it up and running. In terms of just speed ripping through different tasks, this thing is as fast as any computer in my house, and it's an i3 with eight gigs of RAM. 
The computer I'm filming this on has 32 gigs of RAM, a 1070 Ti, a Ryzen 7 processor, and I'm telling you, this little Chromebook feels just as fast as that thing does, which is insane. And yes, it's running an, an entirely different operating system, and you can't do all of the same things. But Google is bridging that gap more and more now, and it, it's getting to a point where I can honestly say I'm perfectly happy with a Chromebook as my laptop, and I can do almost everything I do on my main computer on that Chromebook now. I will say that one small downside of using Chromebooks like this that have higher end processors is they do generate a little bit more heat. So do expect if you're using this thing on your lap for a little while, you are going to start to get a little bit of a warm lap. Perhaps in other devices, that's not going to be the case. In Chromebooks that run an ARM processor, for instance, probably not going to be the case. But in order to get this level of performance and smoothness, the trade-off is... Uh, occasionally your lap might be a little on the warm side. In terms of battery life, I'm routinely getting five hours or more on this thing. I think I've gotten close to seven hours once, which is definitely pretty darn solid, more than enough to get me through a day, probably a second day in between charges. And like I said earlier, super happy to see a USB-C port on either side, which means that wherever I'm sitting, there's probably a charger nearby on either side. That's fantastic. And it does charge pretty darn quick as well. Battery life really has not been an issue for me at all. So guys, this has honestly been one of the most positive reviews of any product I've made in quite a while. And if the big question is, for $399, is this thing worth the cost of entry? I would say, if you're looking for a laptop that is very, very fast, that you don't really have to worry about viruses, that has a ton of applications to use, that are going to work really well. You're going to have these AI features coming. Maybe you're a Google Pixel user. I think it's like a perfect laptop because it synergizes with the Pixel ecosystem as well with their sort of phone link software. Or I think it's actually called Phone Hub if I'm remembering correctly. See your notifications, your pictures, your recent Chrome tabs right there in your taskbar. If that's what you're looking for, for $399, this thing is absolutely stellar and I have no problem recommending it at all. Before I close up this video review, I do want to say thanks to Google for sending this thing over for me to review. I do appreciate it a ton. I've had a blast reviewing this thing. I do also want to say that as always, no money has changed hands for the production of this review and Google, Asus, and the like are seeing this video at the exact same time as everyone else. I will drop some links in the description down below to purchase this Chromebook. If it is an affiliate link, that means I will earn commission off of that sale and I will put that word affiliate next to the link so that you will know which one is which. It does, like I said, help support the channel. So if you do use one of those links, thank you very much for that. And thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this, guys. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friend.